Hello everyone, welcome back. This is going to be CC Cycle 2 and Week 9 Memory Work Ideas and At Home Ideas. And I just want to say right off the bat, please excuse my voice and bear with me as I do the best I can to make it through this video dealing with clearly some uh, voice issues. My voice is trying to come back, um, but I'm going to do my best to make it through this video. I wanted to go ahead and make sure that I got this out uh, before too late. So we're just working with the voice that I have. Okay. So for the 15s this week, we are skip counting the 15s and we sing this to the tune of, I think it's called Johnny, when Johnny comes marching. And in light of what we learned in dynamics for last week's tin whistle, we are going to do this from soft to loud using the dynamics terms that we learned last week for week eight, which are starting with pianissimo as a whisper and then going all the way up to really loud. Uh, maybe not quite fortissimo, maybe not quite the loudest we can yell, but getting up there. Every time that we skip count, we will go a step higher on that list of terms in uh, dynamics. All right. For English, we have interrogative pronouns, and those are questions, right? So who, whom, whose, which, and what. Those are interrogative pronouns. And with our chicken dance song, this week the tune sounds like this. Interrogative, who, whom, whose, which, what. And next week we'll go on to demonstrative, and pretty simple. Uh, it helps to list them all out. I don't know if you're going through them and reminding your class each week, but it does help to have them listed from the beginning with the nominative pronouns all the way through. And that is interrogative pronouns. Again, if you want to hear the whole tune, check it out on the video that I posted that has the whole chicken dance song with all the pronouns. All right, for history we have, tell me about some absolute monarchs. For this week's history, I'm changing it up just a little bit. What I'm going to do is actually draw on my board this week the countries that we're talking about. So we'll have Europe up on the board, and then I'll have each of these countries colored in a different color so that they stand out from each other. And then within each of those countries, I will list the absolute monarchs that were part, that were representative of that country. So Henry VIII of England, we will put Henry VIII inside of England. Uh, Louis the 14th of France, we'll put him in France and we have Philip the second of Spain. So we'll just do that for all of them. Just list out their names within the country that they represent. And then I'll let the kids take turns kind of telling the story and pointing to these places on the map on the board as we do the history song. You could also do this with a printed up map that you have or whatever maps you use for geography could just go through and as you play the song or sing the song, have the kids take turns just pointing out to these different areas as we sing all the different absolute monarchs. And that is my plan for history. For Latin, we are going to go over the first conjugation endings and clue perfect tense this week. So we're moving on to a new list of endings and um, for this, I will be taking out a blue piece of paper where I've written first conjugation endings, clue perfect tense, uh, <laughs> my nails. My daughter did me a spa day yesterday, and this was her fantastic artwork on my nails. So I hope you enjoy that. <laughs> Back to our clue perfect. I'm using a blue piece of paper because clue perfect reminds me of blue. So we're writing that on a blue piece of paper. And then the first sound in the pluperfect conjugation endings is aram. So I drew up a ram here to remind us that the first sound that we're making for our pluperfect endings is aram. Okay, so aram, eras, erat, aramis, eratus, erant. And we'll just sing that. And we may pass our ram around so that we can have that as a visual aid and a visual reminder that our pluperfect tense starts with arum. Okay, and that is how we'll do our Latin. For timeline, we have Byzantine. We'll take our B. Oh, actually, it starts out with 500. So 500 AD, 500 AD, boom, 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 Byzantine Emperor and then J for Justinian. So Byzantine Emperor 
And so I'm going to do anything for royalty. We'll do like a sash from the up here down to our waist. So Byzantine Emperor. I'm just making an E here. Emperor Justinian. Then we have another B, Benedict and monasticism. And for that, we do like we're putting on a big hood of a robe, symbolizing the robes that monks wear. Um, also the symbol for monasticism. So we'll do Benedict and monasticism. And then we have Muhammad founds Islam. So we're going to make an M, which is three fingers over your thumb. So Muhammad founds Islam. We do this for Islam because of the number of times that pray throughout the day. So we're um, showing like we're praying. Okay, so Muhammad founds Islam. Ooh, and then we have Zan generally Ghana in Africa. For that, they were wealthy traders. And so we're just going to do the sign like we're trading back and forth. Okay, so Zan generally Ghana in Africa. And then the song actually does like some um, beats. And so we can kind of beat on the table or beat on our laps during that part. Then we have Franks defeat the Muslims at the Battle of Tours. So we're going to um, take our hand and do the sign for defeat. We've done this before in the timeline, just taking one hand and pushing that hand down. Franks defeat the Muslims. We're going to do this at the Battle of Tour. Then we have the Golden Age of Islam. So we're going to do the sign for gold again, where we point to our ear and then bring the Y down for yellow, like we have something yellow in our ear representing gold. So the Golden Age of Islam. Ooh. And then we have Vikings, a V, Viking, raid, and trade. So V for Vikings. Raid is taking and trade. So Vikings, raid, and trade. And that is what we're going to do for timeline. For geography, we are learning about the Caribbean. And so I uh, originally learned this to a super fun tune from CC Happy Mom. And we are going to keep with that tune because it works and we love it. So um, we will just take the map and we'll point to all the locations with our fingers. But as we do that, we will sing it to this tune. Cuba, Jamaica, and then comes Haiti, Dominican Republic, then Puerto Rico, oh, to the east, oh, islands of Caribbean. And um, that is how it goes. On the map, you just point as you sing to those. So we'll take out the map and we'll show it like this. Cuba, Jamaica, and then comes Haiti, Dominican Republic, then Puerto Rico. Go, oh, to the east, oh, islands of Caribbean, cha-cha-cha. Cuba, Jamaica, and then comes Haiti, Dominican Republic. Then Puerto Rico, oh, to the east, oh, islands of Caribbean. And that is how we will cover our geography. Okay, for science, we have what are some parts of the sun? And so for that, we are going to have these pictures out. I am thinking that I will provide a picture that is already drawn for my little ones and then they can actually color this in or just point to it as we go through introducing it in memory work. And then for review, we may have them color this in and then they can have that visual to take home. Uh, but we sing this to the tune of You Are My Sunshine, and that I got off of CC Connected years ago from Jay Rudzik. It's J-R-U-D-Z-E-K, and I will see if we can have that added to the new C3 if it's not there yet. But this is what the tune sounds like. So it is, the sun is hot and has many parts, the core and radiative zone. Convective zone, sunspots, and photosphere, solar flare, and the corona. The sun is hot and has many parts. The core and radiative zone, convective zone, sunspots, and photosphere, solar flares, and the corona. And that is how we will cover our science. And then for review this week, I was planning to have them color in these sheets that we use for when we introduce the sun. What I'm going to probably do is have this drawn up on the board, on my board, as a visual. And then um, I will pass out piece, parts of this that are not colored in, and then they can color it. But if you don't want to do that for review, another thing that I'm going to supplement that with in case we don't, um, we don't use all the time 
is I have these black, I don't even know the name of these, but it's these black coloring sheets where you can basically scratch off the black and reveal color behind it and they can design whatever they want with their papers. And so um, I thought that I would pass these around. I got these from like the Target dollar spot. I think you can get them at Hobby Lobby. You can probably get them at the dollar store. Um, but basically they're just scratch paper that you scratch off the black and reveal color behind. And then I was just gonna let them be creative this week and uh, draw whatever they wanted on their own scratch paper. So that is how we're gonna cover all of our memory work for this week, week nine. For some at-home ideas this week, we'll start with our devotions for Louis Giglio Indescribable. And for that, you can focus on what we're learning in our science experiment this week, which is rockets. And so for that, you would do page 196 on the devotion. You could also focus on the sun, and that is page 36, I believe. Yeah, 36, Great Balls of Fire. But it talks about how big the sun is, and how big we are as Earth in comparison to the sun. Pretty interesting devotion there. So those are two great devotions, page 36 and 196. And then for watching things throughout this week, there are three videos that I could suggest from our normals, which is Magic School Bus, Rides Again, Cat in the Hat, and Bill Nye. For Magic School Bus, they have one about the sun, and uh, it's season two, episode 13. It's called Making Magic. And then for uh, Cat in the Hat, it's called No Night Today, and that's season two, episode four. Bill Nye has one about the sun as well, and his is season two, episode 13 as well. So those are some different online things that you could check out. As far as some fun food ideas for this week, if you wanted to focus on geography, you could do like Cuban bread or um, Puerto Rican beans or jerk or something like that from the Caribbeans. If you want to focus on history, you could make like a borscht or some Polish pickles, something like that. And then if you wanted to do something related to science, you could do some edible sun cookies or some uh, solar s'mores. And um, those would all be some fun ideas for food ideas to relate to this week's uh, memory work. Of course, there's always the Old World Echoes reading those stories for read-alouds, and then for some other read-alouds, you could always read the Who Was series for Who Was Queen Elizabeth. That would be a great one for this week. I also got this book um, that has to do with the sun, also with the water cycle and what the sun has to do with that, but this is called Rivers of Sunlight. Um, very informational. It has to do with how the sun moves water around the earth, basically. Uh, full of information in terms of like just how the sun affects our climate, the water cycle, the pool that it has on different parts of our world. I mean, just tons of information. That's the back of it. But it does have great pictures and visuals to kind of show what it's sharing all throughout. Just a suggestion on another read aloud. And I will try to link in here uh, a movie suggestion. I meant to mention that and um, I didn't. So I will link in here our movie suggestion for this week as well. I think that is all. So thank you for watching. I hope it's been helpful and I look forward to seeing you next week for week 10, hopefully with a much better voice. Bye.